In this second part of the Year 5 method tutorial, I'm going to show you how to finish solving the centerpieces as well as the last cross edge. So after solving your first two centers, as well as your first three cross edges, there are two main ways in which people solve the last four centers and the last cross edge. The first way is just like how we do it on the 4x4 cube, which is to solve the four centers first and then pair up and insert our last cross edge. The second way is to pair up the final cross edge, store it on the right hand side of the cube and then solve the last four centers whilst preserving these three cross edges as well as the one on the right hand side of the cube. So I'm going to show you these two methods using two examples where I solve the last four centers and the last cross edge. Uh, solving the last four centers without messing up what you've already stored on the left hand side can be a little bit tricky and it certainly takes time to get used to the extra restriction posed on the 5x5 in addition to the 4x4. However, if you ever took the time to switch from reduction to the Yao method on the 4x4, you'll notice that it was a little bit awkward at first trying to preserve this sort of stuff and it will be the same on a 5x5, but once you get used to it, it isn't actually that bad and you can still find that you're able to use your dominant hand uh, quite a lot. So to help us solve the last four centers, we're going to be using a lot of four RW moves to shift centers from uh, one place to another around the x-axis, as well as uh, three RW and two RW, and then moves of this top layer here. So in this first example, I'm going to solve the last four centers and then figure out how to solve our last cross edge. So here we have a one by three on the blue and two uh, edge centers here. So what we can do to bring this one up here and create the T is do L prime, uh, L, F wide L prime like that. So effectively, oops, what I did there was R three R W U prime three R W prime to place this center there. And then I've got this one, which I can attach to the T like that. And then what it might, what it's very good to do here is actually do a U two to place this on the left hand side. And we notice there are no blue pieces here. So we're going to put this on the bottom like that and Actually, before we do that, we'll need to move this one over to the right hand side here. So if we do that like that, now we can use this in combination with these two to pair them up like that and then store them on the right hand side. So notice what we did there was we have this two by three block on the bottom left and it, because we can move this U layer freely and it won't disturb our edges, if we put uh, the remaining blue pieces that we need in this one by three area as well as on the top, then we, all we need to do is just use a wide R and U moves and then we can insert it into the bottom. So we've solved this blue center on the bottom. Now we can solve this orange center because we already have a T like this and we have two edge centers here. So what we can do is actually shift the T to a position where we're able to use it better. So to actually move this to this position, what we need to do is do an L or a 4R like that, U, 4R prime. So now we have this T like this, which is a lot easier to work with and it won't disturb our cross if we do moves like that to create the two by three block. Now we've got these two here and ideally we'd want this one to be in the uh, right hand slice here. So the second slice from the right, because then we'd be able to just put it into this layer, pair it up with these two and place it down here without worrying too much about our cross. Unfortunately, this is on the left hand side. So we're going to have to do an L prime to move this cross out of the way, U2 to put it over there and then do an L. And then what we can do is pair up these two and this one by doing wide R prime U2 R like that. And then we can insert it by doing wide R U2 R prime. So notice there, after I uh, shifted the location of the uh, corner center, the orange corner center, then all we needed to do was just use wide R and U moves, which and we weren't restricted very much by our already solved cross pieces. Okay, so now it's time to solve our last two centers. We're going to do a four wide R prime like that and work on making a two by three block on the front. So we can attach this corner center to this edge center like that. Then if we put this block on the left hand side, so this two by three on the left hand side using L F prime L prime to not disturb our cross, then we can just use the right face, the wide R turns and U moves to insert this last one by three. Like so, now we've solved our last four centers and all we need to do is pair up the last three edges which form our last cross edge. So our last cross edge is the orange and white. We've got one piece here, one piece here, and one piece here. So what we can do is do a U prime, then wide R2 to pair up these two midges, uh, to pair up these two wings 
and then insert this cross edge, uh, insert this midge up here by doing U R prime U prime, then slice to connect them all, take it out, and then it's probably better to just do R U two R prime U two to insert this cross cross edge down here instead of resolving our centers um, and then inserting it. So if we do R U two R prime U two. Now we've effectively got our cross on the bottom and because we're going to be doing free slice for our next four edges, it doesn't matter that our centers are actually out of alignment here because we're going to keep on using them to solve the first, uh, the, the next four edges. Okay, so the alternative way to solve the last cross edge and the last four centers, as I mentioned at the start, is to solve your last cross edge first and then solve your last four centers with that additional restriction of having a solved last cross edge stored on the right hand side. And I guess the reason why we would want to do this potentially is because we have these free centers and solving the last cross edge after solving the first the, the last four centers can be a little bit awkward sometimes and it's sometimes, yeah, not very efficient, but because we have all these centers to work with here, as in these free slices, then it's easier, a lot easier to pair up our last three edges, which form our last cross edge when they're unsolved. So we've got these two here, so we can do R prime U2 R like that. And then we've got this one and this, these two. So we can go, uh, there's multiple different ways we can actually do this. Maybe we can go U prime, R, U prime, R prime, U, R. And then what we're going to do is actually store it on the right hand side temporarily. And there's, we're going to do a little bit of a trick here once we solve our fourth, our, once we solve our third center, sorry. So what we're going to do is solve our third center, but make sure, be really, really mindful not to break up this edge and keep track of these ones so we don't break them up either. So oh, we don't have very nice cases for our fourth center at all. Um, yeah, this is this is terrible. Um, let's just go with let's go with green for the moment. So what we're going to do is do something like this. So pair this one up with this one by doing white R prime U prime R. But remember, before we do that, we need to actually store this one down here so it doesn't get destroyed. Then what we can do is pair up these two and attach them like that. And now we have no green centers here. So we're going to store these on the left hand side. As we're doing that, we notice this green center is here, so we're going to bring it over to the right hand side. And now we've got the edge here, and these two, and this one, which we're going to pair up. So we're going to move this one out of the way, move that across, slice, and bring it down to the bottom like that. And then as soon as we've solved our, four, our third center, what we're going to do is actually attach this last cross edge to it. So what we can do now is we don't have to worry about, we're not, we're not going to be breaking this up at all or we're not going to be affecting it. And because this last cross edge is actually attached to this last center, then what we can do is just go on and solve our last three centers as if we were just doing it normally. And we don't even need to think about this really. So let's just go on. So we've got these three, which we're going to create a one by three bar from. Like that. Always keep in mind we need to preserve this. Then we've got these three, which we're going to pair up. And we're going to attach them and put them in the left hand side like this. So do an L like so. We're going to bring it to the bottom like that. And all the while this cross edge that we've previously solved remains attached to this solved center. And then we've got these three which we need to put on the bottom right here. Like that. And luckily enough we've got this two by three block already solved. So we can move it over to the left by doing an L F prime L prime and then use wide R and U moves to solve this last one by three. And then whilst we were doing that, this last cross edge remained solved. So what we're all going to do is align our cross or either insert the last cross edge, then align our cross. Or luckily here, this last cross edge was actually the color of our third center. So all we need to do to insert it is just do a U2 and then we can go on and solve our, le our next four edges. So now that we've solved all of our centers and our cross, in the next and final part of the YAO method tutorial, I'm going to show you how to pair up the last eight edges and solve the three by three stage.